What we do in this lab is we purify fluoride salts on a small batch size and then supply those salts to corrosion science folks to do materials compatibility testing and also supply it to chemists to do thermophysical property measurements. So it's kind of an enabling facility for all the other downstream salt science research. So this lab was set up for the both purification system and the loading and unloading to handle beryllium containing salts, which is, is pretty unique. When we have moisture, for example, which is one of the impurities, the moisture is going to react with the alloys and the alloys are going to corrode. And so we are working with another group and we're developing a method currently to analyze impurities in uh, molten salts. We're aiming at understanding corrosion in these molten salt reactors so we can make the best decisions in terms of the materials we use, the salt chemistry we use, and the additives to the salts we use. We also do experiments using more advanced spectroscopy to try to really understand at a fundamental level what's happening at the interface between the material and the salt. Chromium chloride is actually one of the products of corrosion in chloride salts. So being able to look into the properties of that is very important for any of the corrosion studies. So this setup is for the production of chromium chloride salt. It's also really important to look at the heat capacity for the coolant and fuel salts. I'm using a differential scanning calorimeter to be able to determine what the melting points and the heat capacities are for the different salts. The one I'm working on right now is the coolant salt. The melting point will help us know what temperature the reactors need to be run to because we need to be well above the melting point so that it stays molten. We've been making depleted uranium. We've been looking at the depleted uranium, the molten salt of that. We've also been making uh, plutonium-242 salts. And then we start adding different ratios of the depleted uranium with the PU-242. And again, we evaluate those looking at density and viscosity measurements. It's important to understand how the plutonium interacts with the uranium within the molten salt reactor. Given X variable, whether it's temperature or heat, that relationship is very important. We need to understand the chemical behavior of molten salts with fission products, activation products, corrosion products, additives. So what we have here is a net skimmer. It is a thermal analysis unit. It does thermogravimetric analysis. It does differential scanning calorimetry. And what's so special about it is it has a quadrupole mass spectrometer with a shortened and heated path between the sample and the detector that mitigates or eliminates condensation for evolved gas analysis at temperature. That's important information for thermodynamic modeling, for example, to help with the design and operation of the molten salt reactor, to really move that technology forward. We're investigating the off-gas of the molten salt reactor. And Oak Ridge is collaborating with Pacific Northwest National Lab. One of the things about the, the fuel salt reactors is that you don't have a cladding. So the salt that's uh, going through the, the primary coolant system, you're generating uh, fission products, fission gases, you may be generating mist. So what you need is some sort of system that can remove a, a number of different types of materials. We have developed an idea for a molten hydroxide scrubber, which is sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide eutectic and essentially you've got a glass prototype where we can actually see how this scrubber would work. On this system, we monitor the pressure, the flow, and the temperature. In the aerosol generator, we're using a 1.5 micron particulate, and you want to see that it's separating from your liquid the way we've designed it to. At the bottom of the scrubber, we have a port that allows you to collect the particulates. PNNL will be analyzing the liquid in situ or post-processing to ensure that we are scrubbing as expected. And then based on that, we're actually working on developing design diagrams and engineering calculations for the actual hydroxide scrubber. The first optical spectroscopy technique that we're focused on right now is called laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy to make a microplasma, something like a millimeter by millimeter by millimeter. And so anything in that off-gas, for instance, is going to be turned into that plasma and we'll be able to to measure it, whether it was a gas, a liquid, or a solid. Beyond elemental concentrations, we also 
uh, expect to eventually, with high resolution spectrometers, be able to tease out isotopic information. So this could also give you some additional uh, information on what's going on inside your reactor.